when you first start Seven Days to Die, you're thrown into this massive zombies wasteland where it's just you or maybe a few friends. But it starts you off with these basic tutorial steps. So usually I don't read them just because I've read it so many times. But it, it starts you out with some uh, some objectives in the top right that you can do. It's it's more beneficial to do it than to just leave it alone. Starts you off with some water, food, bandage. This is great to stop dogs from making you bleed. Because as soon as they hit you, they have a chance to make you bleed. And bleeding, you can only stop. Oh, that's a dog. That's a dog. Run. And as you can hear it right behind me, they are faster than you. Which makes sense. But they're relentless. Torches are awesome. And land claim blocks. These are good for if you're playing online with random people. Because they set up like your base. You place it and then blocks in this area take longer for other players to break. So what I usually like to start off with is making a, uh, a stone axe. So you punch plant fiber. Get some of that. And then there's all these bunch of random wood things on the ground. This will take so long for you to get enough wood. What I usually do is, if you go over to the starting house, is usually one of them, these trees. These are great, because you do one damage per fist hit, so this is so much faster than going for the 100. And once you have an axe, then you can actually start to like hit the other wood, you know, aloe right there. But you can hit other wood to get it faster, get more rocks. Worst thing to do is you see this big rock and you're like, oh, let me just Minecraft this. But like in Minecraft, you need a pickaxe for it to be actually beneficial. So you need to scavenge around for some rocks, like this little guy. These are your friends. And this is your crafting menu for hitting X on Xbox, or I forget the, the button on PlayStation. But right here, yeah, square. But it right here, it'll show what you need and what you have. So we need some more rocks, but we have everything else. This game, on the seventh day, everything gets really creepy and eerie, and you just, you need to survive a constant wave of zombies. And there's no hiding from them, because as soon as it hits a certain time, they just know exactly where you are. You're going to have to build a really strong base, probably some guns, some ammo. Also, if you happen to spawn in in the desert, then these yucca plants are great. Because they give you food, and food is tough to get in this game, because water, you just need some, some glass jars to fill up, and then you boil them. But every cactus, every yucca plant has yucca in it. And if you look at what the yucca actually does, so it gives you plus 4% fullness, which is basically how hungry your character is. It goes up to 100% where you, you can't eat anything if you're at 100. And the lower it is, the faster your energy goes down. And bird's nests. Bird's nests are great for beginners. Because it gives you, you need feathers to make arrows. And then you use those arrows with the bow to you know, shoot zombies from range. Because if some of the zombies, when they hit you, they stun you. And you don't want that. Because then you're just stuck getting hugged by a dude who wants to kill you. Once you make your axe, first thing I do is, well, get more rocks. Because that's the annoying part that you just had to deal with for a bit. I usually have enough of this on me to make at least one stone axe. Because it's so annoying to have to just start from scratch every time you need an axe. Murky water. If you drink this, you have a 50% chance of getting dysentery. Not fun. Don't recommend it. If you're lucky enough to find a cooking pot, then definitely use that in a campfire. Campfires are awesome. That's how you cook your meat. That's how you boil your water. When you find areas like this, your, your, your first instinct is to just walk up, start looting, right? No. That's how you die. You need to have 
a wooden club. This thing saves you from everything. It's definitely the best thing in the game, totally. Yeah, no, this this, this sucks. It's just a little bit better than the axe for killing zombies. Why is it better than the axe? Uh, it does more damage. So each weapon has specific, like, like does more damage for this specific thing kind of stuff going on. So the club is, it does more damage to entities. Like pigs, zombies, rabbits, deer, all that. Axes do more damage to blocks and wood and all that. Pickaxes do more damage to stone and iron. While I was using my axe, it broke. See at the bottom, this item needs repairs or is missing parts. Every item in the game, like every tool, it does that. Now, at the start, I don't recommend repairing your level one axe. I recommend scrapping it because now when you make a second one, it'll be a higher level. Boom, level four. One of the things that I like about scrapping is that you get some of the materials back. With zombies, usually I like to take care of them right away so they don't sneak up on you. This zombie, it's coming at you. Don't attack it with your axe because it, it will do less damage. But if you use your club, they'll, they'll hit you back, but then they get knocked down. And then while they're on the ground, you just keep bopping them a little bit, and then boom. These crates, when you see them scattered around randomly, it you, you're going to walk up to them, and it's going to be like, oh, no, I can't do anything with this. You need to break the first layer. But as soon as you break it, then you can get into it. And it usually has some pretty good stuff. Like a sledgehammer and two really durable doors. That is very lucky. This right here is a gun part. So what you need to do for like certain guns, except for the blunderbuss, because that, that's a certain thing that you, you just build with, I think, gunpowder, duct tape, and a bunch of other stuff. But gun parts, you need to have the recipe for the gun before you can assemble them. Also, this game has a little bit of like a Skyrim or Fallout mechanic where when you crouch, it shows if you're detected or not. And, okay, yeah, she's she's not as fast as, okay, okay, yeah, so they can stun you. I'm trying to move forward. Yeah, finding a house at night is crucial because you do not want to be stuck out here because right there, that was two zombies. I got hit only a little bit and I'm already infected. And the infection, basically, if you get this and you don't get antibiotics or a way to cure it, you will die within the amount of time that it says. So for me, it says two and a half hours. So I have two and a half hours to live. If I die, then my max health gets dropped 10 points and I'm gonna have to find my stuff again. But if you don't have a, 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 uh, a bedroll, bed then you then do not have a spawn point. spawn point. Just like with Just Minecraft, with Minecraft. Arrows, arrows are really important. Now, when you first pull out your bow, you're going to be confused because it's not letting you shoot, right? You need to hit B for it to actually load in the arrow. Now, headshots Headshot. on these guys are huge. You can actually hit them. These don't scrap them. They're so useful. These add to your... I mean, they're a schematic, so they actually let you build them. But they also level up, like, the leatherworking skill right there. It says plus one. So if I do that, then I unlock the recipe, and I can go over to my, my level up screen. And depending on how much I actually did already, it'll give me some... Um, some skill points up at the top. Now, usually I like to start off with sexual Tyrannosaurus. So you have the stamina of this ancient beast. Regain stamina faster with every rank. That's awesome. Stamina is the biggest thing that gets you killed. Because you can't run without it, and you need to hit zombies with it. Like, it doesn't matter what weapon you have if you have zero stamina, because then they all suck. Also, these couches are great. Break them with your axe. My inventory was full. Okay, so 
Yeah, when you break that couch, you get leather. You need 20 leather to build bellows. And then those bellows are hugely important. Because they're what makes you, like, build big iron things. Like the sledgehammer, certain axes. Because the bellows is used to make the forge. Yeah. Yeah, and then the forge is used to make the metal things. Oh, cooking pot. This is huge. So, with the cooking pot, it lets you boil water. As soon as you make the campfire, place it down, and then you use it. Now, it's going to be... You're going to be like, what? I can't make bottled water. You need a cooking pot. That's why this thing is huge. You put it in, boom, you can do it. But you need fuel. So, put your fuel in. Then cook. You don't have to stand near it for it to do its thing. So feel free to keep scavenging while it's cooking. Now that you found your your place you're going to call home, you're going to look around and be like, wow, this place is falling apart. So you got to start upgrading, which is used with your left trigger. But you're going to notice it technically has a second floor. Which means we can build up to it. And you can just, you can build whatever you want, really. But at the start, you don't want to waste your resources that much. You want to find a place and then build your stuff. Now, the thing about this game, it, it doesn't have Minecraft physics. So if you have just a bunch of floating blocks, it will fall. Like, if I sit here, and I just, I keep building off of that one thing, it'll all fall. But, now that that support's there, it can go for longer. Now, it says in the description of the item what it's its uh, max load is, and the mass, and all that all stuff. That stuff. But, but I usually I really just, I usually just do it, do it until it looks, looks like, it's like it's gonna fall, and then put a support. Or like or right, like before, right before, before that. Also, also when, you're when you're upgrading stuff, it takes, it takes all, all of the, the, the axe hits. Axe it doesn't... doesn't if, you if you get it to 75%, it to 75% but, you but, but you don't fully upgrade, upgrade it, it doesn't, it doesn't consume, consume any resources. Now, now I, have I have made a made lot, a lot of, of, like, like I've, accidentally I've accidentally used metal, used metal when I didn't want to. to. So if you so hear, if you that, hear sound that sound and you don't want to use it, don't keep going. It's it's not consuming anything to keep going. Now, the zombies, zombies do, do hear when you upgrade, you upgrade things, so you can't fully chill fully out. Chill out. And, and you can hear them. Hear them. Normally, oh, I recommend I just uh, hanging out and keep upgrading, because that is a lot of them. <sighs> Look at how fast they are. Look, what's that dude doing? I have no idea. Also, forges and a campfire do attract the zombies. A forge attracts these screamer zombies, which attract even more zombies when they scream. And they are terrifying at night. Because you could just be sitting around doing nothing, and then boom. 